This demo is going to show how to create a source mosaic data set from a collection of tiled author photos. In this case, the data source is a collection of Mr. Sid files. In this directory, I have about 230 Mr. Sid files with a total size of about 3 gigabytes. If we look at the properties of each one of them, we can see that each has relatively is relatively large in size, but unfortunately, in this case, does not have a spatial reference. The first thing to do is to create my file geo database. So I'm going to define the location for this. I'm going to actually put it in a directory and also define the name. and run that. This completes very quickly and if we go back to catalog and have a look um, here is that mosaic data set that I've just created and sorry, file geo database that I just created and now what I want to do is to create a mosaic data set. In this case I'm just going to call it A1 and for the coordinate system I can either define something like Web Mercator as a coordinate system um, to manage the mosaic data set in, but in this case, because the data does not actually have um, its own spatial reference, I'm actually going to use the spatial reference of the original source data, uh, which is actually available in a directory. There is a printed project file, so I'm just going to use that project file and use that as the, as the mosaic data set. I'm going to run that. So that runs very quickly. And if we now go back to catalog, and we'll see here is my mosaic data set. And now what I want to do is to add rasters. So in this case, the source is a folder. I'm going to select the folder in which the data is. It's in my F drive. So, all the imagery is here, and I'm going to leave all the other parameters. Note that if I had created my mosaic data set um, I, um, in Web Mercator or another projection, and I wanted to force the source to come from a specific co coordinate system, I could have defined it here as the coordinate system for all input data. So it's actually not necessary to go and change the, was, um, the projection or the coordinate system of every individual file. Let's run that. Um, this runs relatively quickly. So, the mosaic data set completed quickly, successfully, and if we have a look, it added those files uh, in about 17 seconds. If we actually zoom to layer, we can see that it has created a catalog or a mosaic data set of all these individual images. Each one of these um, green rectangles represents one of the files. If we zoom in, we can see that we have access, very fast access, to the high resolution data. If we zoom out, uh, the system is not going to display the images, because in this particular case we would have to open about 230 images every time I pan and zoomed around. If we have actually look at the attribute table for the mosaic data set, you can see all these individual images and the low pixel size in this case defines um, the highest resolution of the highest resolution pixels in the image. And in this case it's in, in feet. So what we want to do now is to create an overview. Overview allows us to look at the imagery also at small scales. So to do that, we go back to the catalog, right-click on the mosaic data set, and we have the option under um, <coughs> Optimize to either define overviews, where we can actually specify a lot of the different parameters, or just build the overviews, and that's going to use the default parameters. So um, I'm just going to let it run with the default parameters, and this is going to run for a short amount of time.
the overviews have been created. Uh, you can see it actually took just under a minute to have to create those. Um, I'm actually going to quickly look into the file system and have a look at where it actually generated those those images. Um, they were in my overviews directory and if you actually look at the size of that it's actually only about 100 megabytes in size so although the source data is about 3 gigabytes of Mr. Sid files the overviews which provides access at um, small scales is only about 100 megabytes in size so you can see now as I pan and zoom around I have access at uh, small scale if I zoom in I also have quick access at large scale now, one thing you'll notice about this mosaic data set is that it has black borders around it. These are actually um, no data pixels uh, within the um, the SID files, uh, and typically we want to remove those. Now, unfortunately, we can't just define black as being no data um, in the, due to the fact that Mr. SID is a lossy compression, and therefore if we just did that, we would actually get artifacts all the way around the sides. So what we want to do is to actually modify the mosaic data set just to remove those uh, black areas. The simplest way to do that is to go to the mosaic data set, look at its properties, and um, if we look at the properties, go to defaults, and we'll see a number of parameters here. Um, one of them is always clip its raster to its footprint. I'm going to turn that on. Uh, what's important also is always clip the mosaic data set to its boundary. That's on. Uh, so we can, that means that we can actually modify the boundary and actually clip the images by the boundary. Um, in this case, um, there is actually no data with um, inside inside the footprint. is always data, uh, so I can actually turn this um, flag off as well. So here we're seeing our mosaic data set, and what we want to do in this case is actually look at the boundary. The boundary you can see is actually a red line. I'll remove the um, the footprints so you can see it a bit, a bit clearer and what we want to do now is just to edit that and define how to clip the data. So to do that we can actually go to boundary, select the boundary and then go to edit and go to modify and then I'm just going to go and reshape so I'm going to say uh, I want to clip this off from, let's say, over here. And we can actually clip this off from, let's say, here. So I'm just actually going to um, clip off some of the areas that I don't want to see. I'm going to just do this pretty roughly. So let's quickly do that. Here, clip this off, this off, this off, this off. I'm just doing it very approximately, but uh, these images right at the end, ex end extent of the image we don't want, particularly want. Okay, so very quickly edited the boundary. Um, let me save that. Save footprints. And now you'll see what actually is done is to clip clipped the footprint um, by, by that boundary. So now the images obviously haven't changed. All we're doing is on the fly is clipping the imagery to the boundary. So that is that. Um, additionally, what I could do is I could further clean it up by actually clipping the footprints as well as the boundary. So to do that, I can select my um, boundary again. And then what we can actually do is um, go to Modify and use Clip. And what I want to do is to say Clip Everything by the boundary. So what I want to do is to um, <coughs> preserve the area that intersects and um, go clip. This is now going to um, 
go round and clip all the footprints uh, based on the boundary. Okay, that process is now completed and we can see that there are some uh, footprints still remaining. Um, these are actually um, footprints that are actually not being clipped by the boundary. They're just out, totally outside. They're actually totally black. So what we can do for those is um, um, to select them. So let's go to um, select and just select all those footprints that we don't need. These are all not required. And now we can actually go to the mosaic data set, go to remove, remove rasters. This will actually go and select all the, remove all the, um, the rasters that are not required. And now what you can see is all those footprints have actually been clipped. So here we now have a clean mosaic data set. Everything has been, all the unnecessary or unwanted uh, records have been removed or been clipped, and we get a clean mosaic data set. That's how you create a source mosaic data set. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.